stopping by the channel. My name is Leah and let's talk about Erica versus Garcelle and these new allegations that might be coming up soon for Miss Erica. Let's get into it. The first thing we're going to talk about is these new pending allegations against Miss Erica. So these allegations have not been fouled, but they could be fouled if if they needed to so i got all this information off the bravo docket y'all know i love their page it's ran by two lawyers and they really break this information down so the caption for the page basically says this and this is what we're going to talk about first hold up if i can find the picture do, 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 do. I must have deleted it. But here we go. <laughs> Let's get into it. It says, Erica may be facing new allegations. So the first one is Jay Edelson is the attorney that was flagged uh, flagged to the courts that the victim... Um, so this Jay Edelson is the attorney for the victims and the family of the victims of the plane crash from Lion Air um, that Tom was representing, but he never paid them their settlement money. It said um, he's been working with the family and the victims um who so it says he has been working hard to get the funds for the victims and was the one who filed claims against erica and tom in northern district of illinois today and when it says today this uh, was posted april the 5th it says today edelson filed a motion asking the courts to approve an agreement he made with the minor plaintiffs who are the plane um, crash victims for the crash and their families, the agreement is that Edelson would be uh, would reimburse the victims for the total amount lost and would then pursue their funds for their responsible by essentially stepping into their shoes and pursuing their claims on their behalf. Attached to this motion, and they put this, this is the juicy part, that it uh, in the draft is a complaint that Edelson intends to file against Erica as well as some as the former Girardi Keys partners should the uh, courts approve the agreement. It is all uh, it is the must de most detailed explanation of the proprietary scheme we have seen to date. So it says the draft complaint is worthy of its own podcast episode, but the high level, um, the high level. So they do have a podcast. That's another thing. The Bravo Dog has a podcast. It says, but um, a high level. It alleges that the Girardi family enterprise engaged in a pattern of racketeering, girl, because you know they take people down for racketeering. Racketeering activities that include wire fraud, mail fraud, money laundering, engaging in monetary transactions and property diverge from specific unlawful activity, interstate transport of stolen goods, obstruction of justice, and that's based on that each of the victims lost $500,000. Here we go. The draft complaint also alleges that the firm's attorneys involved received the stolen money in the form of their salary and that the stolen money was also used to pay Erica's Air Max cards. Ooh, girl. It says the draft complaint also contains a long narrative of how the schemes allegedly operated. This is the, tri uh, the tip of the iceberg, but it states... The basic scheme operated like this. When a new opportunity for cases came into the firm, uh, into in the firm would t tap into the network of non-lawyers, sometimes called case runners, to find them injured clients. These individuals were paid with cash for getting clients to hire the firm, which is illegal, and would also take a cut in uh, also take a cut of any eventful recovery for the client which is also illegal as just on one example hatcher a non-loyal consultant who was responsible for referring the families of the air crash victims got hundreds of thousands of dollars to ensure that his referrals to girardi were exclusive along with similar illegal percentages of whatever the clients eventually got that's gross that's gross to call like people getting People dying and family members, people losing like mad, like either their entire family or part of their family exclusive clients. Like that's gross. It continues within the firm, David Lyrie, Tom, oh, Tom's son-in-law 
and Keith um, Griffin, two of Tom's most senior lawyers, made sure that the clients and lawyers facing aspects of these schemes were managed and appeared to be on the up and up. They struck a deal with firms needed to get a case to settlement, like securing so um, co-consultants in the location a case would be filed, while in some cases committing, uh, committing to pay out more than 100% of available fees. In other words, Lowry and Griffin would make deals with co-consultants, or co-counselors, my bad, co-counselors with full knowledge that they were never going to be paid. Ooh. Once a client settlement money was funneled into the black hole that was Girardi Key scheme, Lowry and Griffin were tasked with uh, funding off inqu inquiries from clients and other lawyers about why their money never came back. Baby. <laughs> Y'all, this is a long one. It continues. When the firm uh, couldn't find its um its operations with clients' money, it oh couldn't fund. When the firm couldn't fund its operations with clients' money, it went in it, oh, it went to lenders taking out tens of millions in financing. Eventually, through Girardi Keys, because untouchable as a routinely delinquent um, debtor, once creditors of Girardi Keys became a beneficiary of the scheme, Diendo and his company, California Attorney Lending, to in order. Okay, hold up. Let me reread that because that's confusing. So it says it continues. When the firm couldn't fund its operations with clients' money, it went to lenders taking out tens of millions in financial uh, in financing. Eventually, through Girardi Keys, became untouchable as a routinely delinquent debtor. Once creditors of Girardi Keys became a beneficiary of the scheme, D'Antero and his company, California Attorney Lending, number two, in order to make back some of the money that Girardi Keys had borrowed, D, I think it's Dinardo. Y'all, y'all know I'm horrible with names. Dinardo continues to fund their firm into um Dinardo continued to firm their firm into 2020, providing that he got the first cut of the settlement money coming from Girardi Key's cases, making sure that the money was paid directly to his company before it ever hit Girardi Key's account. The draft complaint goes on to state Erica act, acted as the front woman. Ooh, Erica. Ooh, Erica, girl. Oh, and this is the last portion too, y'all. It says, the draft complaint goes on to state, Erica acted as the front woman of the operation, selling to the world, including un unexpected clients, that Girardi Keys was successful. And she was exponentially good at, uh, in the role. With tens of millions of dollars backing her, Erica sl shamely displayed her nationwide showroom of the money they stole from the real house of... Um, on stole on real housewives famously spending forty thousand dollars per month on her looks and releasing a song called it's expensive featuring and reframing it's expensive to be me and when push it came to shove and the fraud was close to being exposed erica clamped down on misleading the public into believing that otherwise damning lawsuit was false and that the plaintiffs behind it were forced to apologize no were forced to apologize to tom and the firm we will cover the draft complaint in more detail so if you want to know more based off of what i just read they got more in their podcast erica you in danger i told y'all like i said in um my real housewives of uh, not Potomac, of uh of Beverly Hills videos reviews Erica should have just gave them people their money like it always is sus the way she ha like she holds on tight to this money when you know it's dirty money like and that's the thing like even though like and I get it from her standpoint where she's like I didn't know the money was stolen, but now people are looking at you like maybe you did know. And that's not saying that all of this stuff in the documents is true. This is speculation on the ends of the plaintiffs. And I get them. They deserve their money. 
they deserve they needed that money so it does look crazy to see erica on tv bragging about spending forty thousand dollars on her looks and it's like you should have never did a show called Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Like, that is what we're expecting. We're expecting grandeur and opulence and wealth and, like, obnoxious spending habits. And that's obnoxious when it's like it doesn't have to be. And I just feel like, sis, you should have just gave them people their money. Like, even if you didn't have the money that they had, like I said on one of my videos, Erica is, like, quote-unquote, like, a D-list celebrity when it comes to singing and in reality tv but if she if she wanted to make good or make herself look good and on, on her public image she definitely excuse me should have did a, a concert like i said she's like a lot of people in the, like the white gay community love erica down they love her down she could have had a benefit concert and she could have got, I would have got on stage and would have been like, hey, y'all, thank y'all for coming. I know he was stealing from these people and I just want to pay it forward. All of these proceeds is going to them. Like, thank you for coming. I got other artists here. Like, she should have did that. That would have been so, that would have made you look good. It would have put you out there for your, like, your music career, quote unquote. And then you could have paid them back. But now it makes you look crazy because anytime someone brings it up, and even in the, um, the trailer I watched, you like you only care about the victims because it's cool no people care about the victims because it's it's right y'all stole from them your 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 ex-husband is like in jail girl like what are you talking about like y'all stole from these people and i just it's wild that's wild i mean racketeering isn't a joke like people be going to jail and doing hard time for racketeering like if I was her, whatever them people wanted from me, they could have. I would not play those games with them people. I would not play them games with those people. So let's get into this Garcelle versus Erica beef. <laughs> it's giving Facebook antics, y'all. So a couple of days, like four or three days ago, Erica got on her Instagram and on her IG story, she posted her putting Garcelle's book in the trash. Garcelle has a new book called um, Garcelle Love Me As I Am. And she put the book in the trash and Erica has it. And it basically says um, she she added Garcelle and she said, at Garcelle, even though you unfollowed me, I'm sure you'll see this. And it's just a video legit of her like putting a, putting a book in the trash and she has the trash monster um i think that's his name i don't know that the the, the green monster off of sesame street she did that so like everyone's like girl because it gave very much facebook and y'all know y'all know no matter the race color or creed people get on facebook and lose their rabid minds like i've seen people like like expose their families on Facebook, I've seen people expose their baby mamas, their baby daddies. I've seen people expose their friends. People do wild, uncouth things on Facebook. That's why I've never let it go. <laughs> I will never let it go. <laughs> so, someone asked Erica, like, why did she do that? So, someone was like, hey, uh, so she posted this, and this is just a screenshot of, like, all her tweets. And it starts off, Erica goes, hi, I'm feeling very sassy at the moment. Bring that BS Twitter. And so she quoted it someone and it says, what made you put the book out? Um, what made you throw that book out? Like what made you throw the book in the trash? And Erica goes, her Instagram post, no need to use my name or a very complicated legal and personal problem to sell her book. She has enough friends to help her. So if you wanted to know like what like what the thing like what Garcelle posted. So Garcelle used um <coughs> it was shady. It was shady. It was shady. So like I I I'll give Erica that that Garcelle's post was shady. So Garcelle used um she used the clip of her saying like when her and Erica were like arguing and when Erica's like are you trying to make me look bad and Garcelle's no you already do that on your own promoting her book and it says um, the post says you know how else you can look uh, look bad all in on your own by not pre-ordering your copy of hashtag love me as i am before it comes out tuesday link in bio so erica took offense to that like so that's why she put the book in the trash 
but then things kind of got a little more like a little like more salacious because then erica started alleging that like there was other things so this is what they said so so erica quote tweeted something like so quote tweeted this person and this person said garcelle's gonna pay the rent this month after the free promo you have for her sis hashtag charitable queen and then erica said oh she should cut me a check and then somebody said hi is it true that garcelle trashed the whole cast on her in on her book to get publicity on her book and then Erica retweets and said, no, Jess, Elisa Rinna, Kyle, and Amelia, a teenager. So then people were like, what are you talking about? So somebody, this, so then this started to get shopped around by someone who is alleging that they read the book. And this person says, okay, I just borrowed the ebook. Only chap, there's only eight chapters in Garcelle's book. But it says, only a, only a chapter eight talks about real house, well, Maybe there's not only eight chapters. I read that wrong. Y'all, I be, sometimes I gotta learn how to slow down. It says, so if the comment starts off like this, it says, okay, I just borrowed the ebook. Only chapter eight talks about Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. She explains her side of the of two stories. One, when she, when Rena was talking about Amelia eating disorder and she brought up her son's struggle and a, um, and a total her to, F, oh, and he told her to F off. Um, two, when Kyle accused her of not paying her pledge donation, and that's it. Amelia is never mentioned by her. No one in, no one is trashed. So people are like, girl, Erica putting 20 on 10. So then there was a clip of Garcelle at a, um, book signing tour. And Garcelle even admits, she's like, was it shady? Yes, it was shady. But she always talking about how she don't give a F and I'm paraphrasing. So I didn't think it was that serious. But she was like, I'm going to send her flowers because, you know, she really helped me because she really promoted the book. And that's honestly the truth. Like one thing about this whole situation, Garcelle like ran with it. Even when Erica made that post, Garcelle ended up posting the, uh, a video of her getting ready, I guess, for like a... um I guess a, a promotion or some sort or maybe a TV gig and she looked beautiful getting her makeup done in black and white and all she's doing as the camera is panning back and forth is like winking so it's like she's really unbothered by like Erica's antics and I'm just looking at Erica like sis sis Erica has so much on her plate that I don't think this is this is it. Honestly, I feel like slightly bad for Erica, and that's a that's a that's a slight. And when I say I feel bad, I feel bad because I think she she's not coping well with all of this that's um transpiring around her. I think she's leaning into this villain role because it's going to pay the bills, and that's what she needs because either she might go to jail or she gonna need to pay her lawyers to keep her out of jail. And I, I get it. Like she, she feels like everybody hates her. So I might as well play the villain. But it's like, sis, you aid in that. Like, I think she doesn't understand that she's doing a detriment to her own self because nobody is like bothering you. All they want, all people want you to do is pay back them people. <laughs> now I won't say that because some people have been sending that lady death threats, which is wrong. Like y'all should not be sending people death threats. But yeah, y'all like that was their whole little beefage. I'm curious to see like if this is going to be the energy that they're bringing for the season because that's the issue with Real Housewives of Beverly Hills like it always like they give us good promotion people be doing antics especially Lisa Renna online and then when we watch the season it's very lackluster and dry so I'm hoping this is going to be like a good season I, I'm hoping with the added of Sheree uh, no Sheree I mean with Sheree and I think her name is Diana that like it it vitalized like rejuvenates the cast because I mean honestly Erica ain't gonna bust a grape so I don't nobody gotta be worried about Erica being so angry because even like Sutton was able to get her off her rocker when Sutton laughed in her face when Sutton said <laughs> when Sutton looked and then Sutton, Sutton giggled I you know it's Sutton, Sutton, Sutton is not someone to be afraid of. So I'm just kind of like, girl, Sutton got you. 
But yeah, y'all, that's it. That is all. That is all the topics I have for today. But remember to be bravely authentic and drop down in the comments below and let me know your thoughts. Deuces.